So the K is clearly pronounced as Kian Kia. Kian Kia, what a beautiful name. My apologies, Kian Kia, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's fine, you get to learn how to pronounce the name. Yeah. We're, we're definitely going to do a lot of things um, going forward. I am excited to be here. And I want to appreciate you, Mahin and Cheryl, for always being there and checking up, you know, and pushing uh, us to get to this level. Thank you. I was looking forward to this day, and I'm excited that it came through. Well done, everyone, for staying through. I see that it has been a full conference, and I'm excited. Um, I would appreciate if we have like a full screen with everyone because I just want to do a little exercise. Okay, let me try and do that. I mean, I can do, let's see if, um, but is that working? Does that work? Have you got a full screen there? Um, not yet. I think you'll have to do it. fine. Okay, it's fine. So wherever you are, I just want to, to give yourself an embrace, everyone, so we capture that. Can we embrace everything? Let, let me capture that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Lady. So yeah, thank you so much. And so let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Kempia Best, like I said earlier. And I am the convener of the Young Women's Connect Network. I also run the Breakfast Chat uh, community, which is a mentoring session for young uh, people. Uh, we're saying young people because it's not specific to women only, but we also look at um, boys growing up to empower uh, both male and, and, and female. Now, the Young Women Connect Network is an organization intended for mentorship and professional coaching of young women across the globe into the career world where every woman deserves to give the best and be offered the best regardless of her status or ethnicity to meet the 17 SDGs. The question is what we're doing uh, as, uh, creating the sustainable development goals in our communities. And for Young Women Connect, we hope that through the years and the activities that we do, that we will meet the SDGs by 2030. And one of our major goals are to uh, end poverty. And in ending poverty, we started the period poverty campaign where we end period poverty. And ending poverty as in goal one of the SDG is ending poverty in its totality. So we're not just looking at uh, period poverty, but we're looking at poverty as in uh, knowledge, information, and, and all sorts. So uh, Young Women Connect started the Pad Bank Project. Uh, we call it the Girl Journal. And the Girl Journal is a project that helps young girls to put down their purpose in writing every month. Uh, take out what you have achieved in the previous month and what you look out for in the coming months. So it's like setting out the goals and taking out your achievements, but not being so hard on yourself. I mean, because sometimes we just lay back and let things be. Uh, but with these young girls, we try as much as possible to encourage them to set our goals for themselves and not to focus on that period because we realize that most girls get scared when it's time for them to um, start their menstrual circle. And it has been challenging because the majority of Nigerian young girls are not able to afford sanitary pads. Now, we have um, sanitary pad being sold from like 500 now, 650, which is about um, $141. And with the level of uh, uh, poverty in Africa, in, in Nigeria particularly, most of these young women do not have access to funds to be able to 
uh, by the sanitary cards. Now, the Young Women Connect has been engaged in several projects, women-led conferences, skill acquisitions, and empowerment training. Now, this empowerment helped the young people to be able to source funding for them to afford sanitary card as little as it is. Um, the capital city where I live in Jos, Nigeria, uh, there is an average level of young people who are able to afford those sanitary pads. Uh, but those in secondary schools, let's say the high schools, and we're looking at age from 11 to 18, uh, do not have any source of income per se because they are students, right? So they're depending on their parents to be able to afford those sanitary pads. And looking at that, we thought to create the card bank in those schools where we deposit card for these young girls to be able to use uh, in their circles. So in an average of uh, 10 girls, eight girls use one sanitary pad for one menstrual circle, one pack of sanitary pad for one uh, menstrual circle. But there are cases where some girls use maybe two to three sanitary pads in a day, depending on their menstrual flow. And we realized that most of these girls need school because they're not able to afford sanitary pad or even um, use, uh, so they use clothes and that doesn't really fall uh, their period. So it gets them very uncomfortable in school, they may get to learn, some of them even get to drop out of school because they're not able to to take care of their menstrual circle uh, hygiene per se. And with that, they get a lot of um, discrimination, a lot of discrimination um, from other um, the other gender. And so when we noticed that, what we did is to also educate the boys on the need for them to understand the menstrual hygiene to support the girls. So we had a project like Women for Women, where boys also get active in advocacy for menstrual circle. And these are part of um, the goal one and goal 10, which is uh, reducing inequalities. We also look at how we can um, involve the girls in mentoring while taking care of their menstrual hygiene. Now, the mentoring session, we, we are also um, focused on the self-esteem. There's a lot of noise in your background. Um, is we're having difficulty hearing you. I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, that's, that's a little okay. noise, Thank but you, I'm sir. trying to Thank control you. that. I'm so sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Um, is this good enough? Yeah. So go ahead. Okay. So in, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry. These things happen. Yeah, so we create um, like social impact projects and we involve uh, young boys and the girls working together to promote the period po um, power. If the boys are not informed, most times the girls end up going back to where we're bringing them out of, right? So it's like um, you're trying to protect them from discrimination, from stigmatization, whatever um, bad thing that they go through and you're not informing the opposite gender. So we, we involved the young boys in the mentoring session. And that was why we brought up the breakfast chat, which is the community-based mentoring program is non-profit. And we have young, uh, young people involved in that project. Now, some of these young people are already doing their businesses. So like they give back, 
we, we have a, like a give back session where they give back in their profits to buy sanitary pads. So they take pledges and some of them just commit to say, oh, I'm buying two, three sanitary pads in a month for three girls. So we collect this, we have a collection center for these sanitary pads where we keep and we're able to supply to these schools. We realized um, after two months of uh, the kickoff of this project that 80% of the girls from the schools that we adopted um, were actually going to school uh, without any knowledge of their self-esteem. And if we keep talking about getting involved in politics, in decision-making, in leadership positions, and we don't uh, uh, attend to the younger people coming up, then we're far from achieving our goals. And in Nigeria, we have a percentage of, a very low percentage of maybe 5% of women in the parliament. And I will say, sadly, that we have a very poor mentoring uh, spirit or mentoring, there's no zeal to mentoring when it comes to the female gender. And so we, we try to push for that mentoring uh, for the young women so that they participate also in political decisions, even from their younger age. So we introduce like, um, a mentoring program for those who are interested in politics in those schools where we have those pad banks. And so far, I would say that the result is overwhelming because they are being informed and they're excited about the project that they are uh, embarked on. These are things that ordinarily in school, uh, they are not being taught. Uh, as part of ending poverty as well, we, started a skill acquisition project. Now this skill acquisition and uh, trainings are for the vulnerable women. So we're looking at single uh, parents, uh, female. We're also looking at uh, girls from a vulnerable community. And so we, we also in a large way, uh, bring in the boys because we don't want to leave them out completely. So just a few of them because our focus is on the girls. And this skill acquisition is in training them to make beads, uh, furniture, baking, you know, so that they will be empowered. And through this empowerment, they are also able to give back to their communities. So we have like a robot project where those who are being uh, uh, those who are involved in the skill acquisition also go back to their community to set up a training for vulnerable people also in their community. We also involve people who are living with disability. Persons with disability are mostly ignored in our community, uh, especially because there's no awareness and most uh, people do not even understand how to accommodate those who are living with disability. We have a project, um, for, for, for those part bank projects that we have in schools, one of the schools that we adopted is the school for the deaf, uh, where all the girls in the school are, um, have hearing impairments. The, the, some of the projects that we have in those schools have been able to encourage the girls I wanted to share something, but uh, it's not coming on. Yeah, okay, so let me just go on. Yeah. We are just coming to the end of um, our timings. So if I oh, could okay, just... Let me, let me just conclude. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, so in, let me just quickly conclude on what we do. Uh, mentoring women for SDGs is essential for empowering women. And like I said, some of the empowering um, skills that uh, empowerment programs that we have are the skill acquisition programs that we have for young women and for men um, in just Nigeria and also in Abuja. It's uh, some parts of Nigeria. And empowering women to participate fully in achieving the SDGs. 
We do mentoring, we provide um, guidance, support, opportunities to develop skills. We do knowledge and leadership abilities for these young women. By mentoring women, we can promote gender equalities. And that's what we're looking at the goal 10, where um, we're reducing inequalities. Then we also are uh, mentoring can take many forms, including one-on-one -on -one mentoring. And this one-on-one -on -one mentoring, we usually have them after our group mentorship session. So we talk one-on-one um, uh, -on -one with anyone who has like personal issues and uh, self-development program um, uh, problems and see how we can come in. And we have mentors all over, uh, not just in Nigeria. And I believe that after this program, we would also incorporate some of the speakers here to be part of our uh, mentors on the Young Women Connect Network. So yes, that please, uh, women please. will be encouraged. Mentoring can also provide us opportunities for women to network outside um, their jurisdiction and connect other like-minded individuals and also to access new opportunities. Thank you very much for this opportunity, even though the time is so short, I wish that I could speak even more on some of the things that we, we do, like the educational projects that we have for some young women who are not able to pay for their tuition. And we have taken up that from 2014 and up to date, we're sponsoring them in school. And we have the STEM who came in to assist us with some of the girls who are interested in sciences. Uh, mentoring women for SDG is powerful. It is endless and our possibilities are limitless. And we keep encouraging girls to do more. Thank you so much, Mahi, Cheryl, and everyone. Lee, I see all of you who have been um, listening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I look forward to another time that um, we'll have another large conference. Absolutely.